declaration. Sometimes I forget to make the rhema declaration before we get into the word, but I remember today. Let's make our rhema declaration. Here we go. Submit the aggregate of myself to the full counsel of Almighty God. I diligently pursue after his word to procure the eternality of his life, to experience a revelatory, liberating, and sanctifying power of his truth, to be completely transformed by the renewing of my mind, to be wholly conformed to the image of his dear son, Christ Jesus, and to be the recipient of his multiplied grace and peace. His word is a burning lamp for every step I take and illumination for every path I travel. In the name of Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. I'm reading from the book of Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. It says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words... And hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for a hid, uh, as for hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I want to use for a thought today. If you will, then God. If you will, then God. Father, in the name of Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach, we humbly approach you now, Father. We thank you for this opportunity that you have afforded us of, for corporate unity and assembly. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to declare the word of the Lord to the people of God today. Uh, Father, this assignment is greater than I am, so I need your assistance, I need your guidance, I need your help. We ask that you grant us access to your mind and to your thoughts. We may declare emphatically and definitively the full counsel and oracles of God to this your people. Touch our minds, Lord. Bless our, our, our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, and our hearts that we may readily apply all that you require of us. And Father, we'll be ever so cautious and careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor. Everyone said in Jesus' name. Jesus name. God bless you. You may be seated. If you will, then God. See, if I will. Now, 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 notice the power in the statement. You have to make some decisions. You must first determine some things. If you want God to work on your behalf. We want God to move first. If God, then us. Mm -mm, no. See, God has been interacting with man since man's beginning. And he knows how man has burnt man with that configuration. Oh, no, 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 no. God is not about to allow us to burn him. 
How many times have we told God, Lord, if you get me out of this, oh, God, I promise. You see, that's if God, then me. The Lord says, no deal. <laughs> you guys have seen deal or no deal. Don't look shocked. I know you saw it. You've seen deal or no deal. <laughs> God, if you show up, then no deal. But it's just amazing how God Seems to just show up anyway. Shows up anyway. How many of you have ever been in a position or predicament and you knew the only way you could come out? God had to show up. And he showed up. He didn't just show up. He showed up on time. That just make you want to make that stank face and shake your head. <laughs> showed up and he showed up on time. Hmm. God is amazing. The power of influence should never be underestimated or ignored. The power of influence. Someone say influence. Should never be underestimated or ignored. Influencers are driven by agendas. And these influencers would also include our adversary, the devil. I hear people say, oh, the devil ain't got no power. Be careful. Because most of the folk who say that are already under his influence. Now the devil ain't got no power. And you look at their lives, you're like, hmm. You sure know how to move under his influence. Hmm. You see, that's when religiosity has to be exposed because many people are more religious than they are relational. I'm not going to go there, but I'm just saying. And we think because we may know a few verses of Scripture that we're okay with the Lord. But I'm going to tell you what James said. The devil believes and trembles. But just because the devil believes does not mean he has procured a place in the grace of God. So I, I, I know a few verses of scripture that I, I memorized since I was a child. And because I have memorized scripture then I'm okay with the Lord. But this is the thing. As I have mentioned before, my question to you is this. How has the scripture you memorized impacted your life? Hmm. How has it impacted you? It's already quiet up in here. I thought I had some amens or something. Golly. <laughs> the power of influence should never be underestimated or ignored. Influencers are driven by agendas. They are quite aware of the power they wield. Especially if theft, death, and destruction are enveloped within their objectives. 
What? Why is it the enemy wants to influence us so badly? And he will even disguise himself to try to be effective in the influence that he asserts over your life. The Bible says he can appear as an angel of light. So not only is he an a influencer, he is also a deceiver. I think we forget about that part. Right, just say that part, that part, that part, that part. Why is this so weighty? Your belief system is primarily responsible for shaping and defining your individual reality, regardless of the presence or absence of truth. Whether that truth is overt or obscure. I'm going to say that again and I'll break it down so that you follow where we're going, okay? Your belief system, say what I believe. What you believe about yourself, what you believe about your world, what you believe about others. Say what I believe is responsible for shaping and defining your reality. Regardless of the presence or absence of truth, whether that truth is overt or obscure. Let me come down and break it down for you because you got to get this. Many times, truth can be in your face, and you don't see it. And you will go on believing a lie right there in the very presence of truth. You have any scripture for that? I'm going to share one with you. John 1.10, he was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world didn't know him. How did Jesus identify himself? As truth. Truth was personified through the, the physical manifestation of Jesus Christ. Truth was in the world, and we didn't see him. Tangible, touchable, physical, we didn't see him. Stuck in lies, religiosity. Stuck in perceptions and perspectives in the presence of truth. Didn't change them. Truth was right there in front of us. Isn't that amazing? But you see, in order for you to discern truth, you must first receive the spirit of truth. So the spirit of truth is a necessity if you're going to discern truth. Well, look at John 16, 13, how be it. When the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. But if I don't have the spirit of truth, I could be in a place where truth is taught and still not see it. That's, that's scary. What did, what did Paul tell Timothy in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians rather, chapter 3? Oh, about verse 5 or 6. He says, people will be ever learning and never arrive at truth. Why, why is truth so important? Because truth, watch this, the truth is infused with the power to liberate you. To 
liberate your mind and provide clear spiritual vision and perception. It's truth is also able to change, modify, edit your worldviews, perceptions, and perspectives. That's the power of truth. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them, set them apart, distinguish them. Sanctify them by your truth. How are you set apart? Not just because you know some verses of scripture. You're set apart because of your intimate relational interaction with truth. A lot of folk go to church and still bound by the devil. In the church where truth is being declared and the spirit of truth is in operation. Still bound by the devil. Why? I don't want to see truth. I see that's when you made the decision. See, it's one thing to be totally oblivious to the presence of truth. But when you're in the presence of truth and you know it. And you refuse to see truth, to apply your heart, to embrace truth for the purposes of liberation and the restoration of vision. Well, remember, you made the decision. You made the decision to remain blind. And you're going to be judged accordingly. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Watch this. A lot of people know the word, but have not yet arrived at a revelation of truth. How are you quoting all that word and still bound? I'm talking, there's some folk that are, I'm talking bound by the devil. But they can quote so much scripture. Embarrass us. I may not, watch this, I may not know as much word as you know, but what I know has made a profound impact in my life. Somebody say, come on, pastor. (laughs) Ah. So now watch this, and then we've shared this with you on numerous occasions. Uh, the word of God, the word of God is the truth of God concealed. But the truth of God is the word of God revealed. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. If everybody knows the word, it seems like they should automatically be free. Ah. You know the word, never been exposed to truth. So since you don't know the truth, there is still addictions and strongholds in your life. So then the word of God becomes a significant influencer. Isn't that powerful? The word of God is a very profound influencer. Say, well, um, if the word of God is such a profound influencer, then how will it impact my life? I'm so glad you asked. When you go back to John chapter 8, notice what Jesus said in verse 30. He said, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples Indeed. Now let's look at that though. Let's break that down. Okay. If you continue in my word, obviously, if I stay in the word, something is happening on the inside of me because I remain a disciple. So if I remain a disciple, I embrace his disciplines, self-control, personal restraints. Hmm. And ye shall know 
the truth. So as I follow through the instructions of his word, imposing upon myself everything that's needed to please him, he begins to reveal himself to me. And through the revelation of himself, I experience liberation from self. We say liberation from the devil. Oh, no, 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 no. The reason why the devil has such a stronghold in your life is because you have not learned how to conquer self. But truth reveals Jesus. Uh -huh. And when truth reveals Jesus, he allows me then to experience deliverance from me. Somebody say, Lord, save me from me. Save me from me, Lord. Hmm. Your belief system, what you believe about yourself, the world around you, and others, is primarily responsible for shaping and defining your individual reality, regardless of the presence or absence of truth, whether that truth is overt or obscure. Truth be told, truth can be present and in plain sight, but hidden. Watch this, truth is first spiritual. Truth is first spiritual. Hmm. Truth is first spiritual. Again, the spirit of truth is necessary for truth recognition and identification. The spirit of truth is necessary for truth recognition and identification. The spirit of truth, the spirit of truth is necessary for truth recognition and identification. Huh. So now then, as now I'm laying a foundation for the text because I want you to see, church, that so many things we have put before the Lord. We're asking God to do so much when we have not satisfied the prerequisites that he has established for us. We want God to do so much while we invest so little. Okay. That's not that deep. And y'all kind of quiet. Okay, you want me to come down and explain it? Okay. We want God to do so much while we still remain in our places of comfort, lethargy, convenience. But you see, what you fail to realize is this. We're asking God to do what he does is he gives you more principles. Oh, you missed it. We want God to do. God says, what I'm going to do is provide for you more truth principles. So what is, he, what is he trying to do then? If I'm asking God to do and he's putting more of his word before me. It's because, listen. What you are lacking, he provides an opportunity for you to become. <laughs> we say, Lord, give us peace. I'm going to put my word before you so you can become peace and you'll never lack peace again. <laughs> you will never lack what you've become. 
you then become a distributor of the thing you once lacked. I need peace in my life. Peace in the name of Jesus. Because you become peace. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. The Bible says he is the prince of peace. If he's a prince of peace and he is also truth resident within my heart, I become that peace. And when they lay hands on you, I can transfer what I have into you. The Bible says freely you receive freely. So you have it. Once you receive it, become peace. So when you walk into a place where there is turmoil and confusion and contention, people just get quiet because peace has walked into the room. Walk through the Holy Ghost up in here. Peace has walked into the room. Walk through the Holy Ghost. Truth has just walked. Peace has just walked into the room. It's amazing how people know they can't lie to you. Some folk won't even try. Because you look him in the eye, you're like, I heard what you said. But you and I both know. That ain't true. Why? Because you become truth. I say, oh, y'all be quiet. The preacher here. The preacher here. Oh. Shh. Cut that. Preacher here. It's amazing. You can share what you've become, but you have to first receive what you've become. Uh, uh, yeah, first receive what you're becoming in order to share. What you have. It's unfortunate that a lot of us are saying, I don't have the peace. I don't have the joy. Well, many times it's because you have not fulfilled the prerequisites of the principles he's been providing for you. You are so focused on God just giving you something. You want God to just give you joy. Watch this. You won't even recognize it. If you're asking God for joy, then obviously you don't have it. So even if he gave it to you, you would not be able to identify it. So what does he give you? Principles. Principles will help you to to define what it is you seek. And when you seek after him, he then reveals what joy looks like and who joy is. And you can become joy, thus you're able to share joy. If you will, then God. Hmm. Let me get back on point. Did y'all get that? I'm having fun this morning. I'm having fun this morning. Let's get back to the text. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and Lift this up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her in silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. When you read these verses of scripture, you will see it is a conditional Many conditionals are constructed with if-then statements. If you do what is being propositioned or proposed, then God will be the conclusion. 
you will then be able to experience the benefits and the blessings of obedience. The scripture says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I think it's verses number 5 or 6, it says, nah, I'm about to mess it up, let me get to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Number six. Now, now, now let, let, let me go back. I, I got to read all of this. Let me go back to verse uh, number three. I'm trying. I'm trying to find the the right version right here because you got to get this. You got to get this, Jesus. You got to get this. Okay. It says in verse number three, for though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, I'm reading from the Amplified, by the way, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and very exalted and proud things that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Being ready to punish every act of disobedience when your own obedience as a church is complete. You can't correct if you're still wrong. See, we still tell people like we tell our children, do, do, do as I tell you, but I'm blinded by what you're doing. I can't hear what you're telling me because I'm blinded by what you're doing. Do as I say and not as I, not as I do. See, but you see, when you do, you then have the liberation to share what you've received through obedience. But you must first satisfy the prerequisites for liberation. Hmm. Y'all kind of quiet again. That means I got to come down and explain. In the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, we heard this during the pandemic. It seemed like every preacher who preached Preach the text, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and what heal their land. How many of us actually did that, though? Oh, everybody was preaching it. Why? Because from a religious perspective, it was the right thing to preach. But relationally, huh, why is it we're still struggling post-COVID? Oh, y'all quiet on me today. It seemed like the message went out, Right? We heard it. If my people. See, that's that if then stuff again. Quick, we call by his name. Humble ours. Oh, that's what we start. That's what God started losing us. We don't mind being called by his name, but humble ourselves. 
humble ourselves and pray. We like to talk about prayer more than we pray. We tell folk, I'm going to pray for you. You want to go back and ask those folks, did you pray? Did you pray for me? Most of the time they'll lie to you. Oh, yeah, I, I, I prayed for you. When did you pray? What did you pray? Oh, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray for you. Humble themselves, humility. Oh God, that doesn't exist anymore. Prayer. Oh God, seek my face. Ain't nobody got time for that. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. She said, oh, no, no, no. Come on, you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. <laughs> Jesus says, come on in the prayer closet. But you want Jesus to come. I tell you what, if you go in your prayer closet, don't come in the room. <laughs> yeah. Jesus he is my doctor and he writes out all my scriptures. <laughs> he gives me all of my medicines in the room. <laughs> But what about the summons? Jesus says, come in the prayer closet. You want me to come in the room, but you won't go in the prayer closet. Come in the prayer closet. See, it's quiet again. A lot of us pray and Jesus come in the room. We don't want to hear when he say come in the prayer closet. You see, if you will go in your prayer closet, then God will come into your room. But he, he will know he's invited in your room when you accept the invitation to go into your prayer closet. I'm preaching this morning. I'm just going to talk to you because everybody else kind of quiet. I got a few clappers out there, but <laughs> seek my face. Seek. We don't have time to do that anymore. Everybody is so busy. You know what I love? This is really funny to me when you're driving down let's say Lake Street, and people, they, they come up behind you real, real fast, right? And they get over to the lane, and zoom, and they're driving so fast, but they stop at the red light, and you pull up right next to them and say, I'm the one you passed up five blocks ago. Everybody's in a hurry to go nowhere. In a hurry to go nowhere. That's it's really crazy when you watch people getting on the interstate. And you got those big 18. You got to respect those 18 wheelers. I mean, they, they in an outside lane. They running. And you got people just going fast enough to merge. But they have not calculated the speed of the truck. So they have to to prevent hitting you and killing you. 
And then it was really funny. People got the nerve to get mad. <laughs> driving all fast. You driving 35 in a 70. And you wonder why they're driving so fast. Because they're driving on the highway. On the interstate. This is not your neighborhood street. As a matter of fact, Sister Sheila, I saw you driving to church this morning. As we were walking. Obviously, you didn't see the guy behind you. Oh, you should have saw him. I thought he was having, I thought he was morphing into something. <laughs> oh, the expressions he was making and the expletives coming out of his, I was reading his lips. I'm like, oh, she has no idea the devil is behind her. <laughs> and she was just driving and smiling. I'm going to church this morning. I'm going to be in his presence. And the devil behind you breathing out fire. I say, bless her little heart, Lord. Preserve her, Jesus. <laughs> There's a fire breathing dragon behind her, and she doesn't even know it. We want God to do, show up, Jesus, and do. But we tend to recuse or excuse ourselves on what's expected and what's required of us. But then watch this. God, I need this. He puts a principle before you. He puts truth before you to see what you're gonna, how you're going to handle that. But you have to also realize when God puts truth before you, the standard for accountability and responsibility has just been raised. To whom much is, mm, much is, uh-huh. So, God, I need this. He gives you this and raises the bar. And you wonder why God hasn't given you what you requested. Yes, he did. He gave it to you in a different form. God, I need some money. And the job calls you. I ain't working that job. But apparently you don't need any money. We want God to just drop it on us. Oh, I feel led of the Lord to give you $10,000. Oh, bless God. <laughs> but you don't understand me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand money management. The first thing you're going to buy is that new outfit you've been looking at that you couldn't afford to begin with. And it's a $1,500 outfit that you don't need. You go buy that, and you gotta oh, you gotta buy the accessories to match it. The, the shoes and the, the purse, the scarf. Oh yeah, the wallet. Oh yeah. And when you come to church, oh, <laughs> I'm broke, but I look good. I'm broke, but I look good. And watch this. It's really amazing how the very thing that required the money still hasn't been taken care of. But you look good. So then you come to church and you know the saints going to give you some money, right? Oh, it's quiet up in here. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know the saints going to give you some money. Let's talk to Sister Tyrella. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk to Sister Monique.
They know better than talk to Sister Lorraine. Sister Lorraine, you're like, hmm, let me see if it's from the Lord. <laughs> I don't feel nothing. No. But is that fair? For you to lack management and responsibility and expect the saints to bail you out? That's not fair. That's not fair. Because ultimately, we all go to work to take care of home, take care of family, right? Oh, no, we all believe in giving. No, don't get me wrong. Sister DeRay loves to give. She's a giver. She, she's a liberal giver. As a matter of fact, she was the one that pulled me out of my stinginess. I was tight. I was squeaky tight. I told y'all about sharing food, right? <laughs> I want it. Fish and shrimp. You want it. Chicken. Give me some of your shrimp. No. You order chicken. If you want shrimp, Order shrimp. But obviously, you didn't want shrimp. You wanted chicken. So guess what you're eating today? You're eating chicken. I'm having fish and shrimp. Oh, you going to learn today. <laughs> But the Lord delivered me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been delivered. Ah, Y'all not hearing me today. I've been delivered. I believe in sharing my shrimp. As long as you continue to share your chicken. Come on here, somebody. <laughs> Yeah, hey, y'all don't hear me today. Y'all don't hear me today. Y'all not hearing me today. Solomon saying, my son, my son, if you will receive. Now, let me just back up a minute. I don't have to hurry up. Why did he not say, my daughter? And when you read the Proverbs, you will find where Solomon never ever makes reference to my daughter. It's always my son. My son. My son. My son. Well, you have to understand that cultural dynamic. Now, I know. See, it's already quiet. I know. Some of you are not going to process this very well. This is what the Bible says. It says, the Lord was speaking to Eve, your desire shall be to your husband, but he shall rule over you. Now, what does that mean, your desire should be to your husband? If you study that out, it means you will want to dominate and control him. Remember Genesis chapter 4 when we, we preached last Sunday? It says that when the Lord was speaking of that thing that was lying in wait, it says, Cain, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And he spoke of it desires you. It means it wishes to dominate and control you. Same word. Your desire should be to your husband. You want to control him. Dominate him. Why are you so quiet? You know that's, that's the truth, right? But he shall rule over you. He shall rule over you. He shall rule over you. A amen? Amen? That's what the word says, right? Oh, why y'all so tight? I tell you what, let me read it to you since y'all so y'all don't believe it's in the Bible. Let me find it for you. 
Yeah, I'm going to read it to you because it's, y'all looking at me like I'm preaching Greek and Latin and Hebrew. Hmm. Uh-huh. Speak, Holy Ghost. Speak. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Give me a minute. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Uh-huh. Oh, I will. I will. And Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall... Oh, y'all don't want to say it. Next word. Well, say it again. Rule, Rule over you. Now, accept that one because if you go to Hebrew, it really gets intense. So stay with rule. <laughs> That's the lighter version. I'm telling you. You study the Hebrew, it really gets intense. So stay with rule. He shall rule over thee. Okay. We good? Okay. So now then, as long as you remain in your place under him, watch this, and both of you are working together to raise them, the children, you, young lady, should never leave the supervision and oversight of your father until you are married. That's biblical. As a matter of fact, the scripture even teaches, this is, I think, in the book of Leviticus, if a woman is married... Her husband dies. She goes back to her father's house. That's what the Bible says. Now why is this so important? Before Adam and Eve fell, Eve was deceived. Okay, let me come down and explain it. Before sin entered into the world, Eve was so wide open to the point she was deceived to bring in the fall. But it was before the fall. So if she had the potential and the capacity to be deceived while still innocent, she needs supervision in her fallen state. So now you see why we have all these instructions to the son. Because you're going to marry somebody's son. I mean, that's if you're not flowing with the, the norm of today. If you're a daughter seeking to marry somebody's daughter, you may want to reconsider. You want to reconsider. But now notice the instruction Solomon is giving. It's to the son. My son. My son. When you go to Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7, it says, A just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So as long as you remain in the house, young lady, the blessings of the Lord will rest upon you as long as daddy is walking in integrity. So, Daddy, before you give her away, be sure you're giving her to somebody who's also integral. Don't just give her away to somebody who has a good job. The devil can have a good job, make a whole lot of money. It's quiet again. I want to be sure he's at prayer meeting. It's my job to protect her. It's my job to preserve her. Talk to me, y'all. Is it your job to protect her and to preserve her? Amen. Well, you want to give her to somebody who's going to love her and respect her and appreciate her. Otherwise, she'll end up back at your house. I'm running out of time. They said, hurry up time so Pastor can 
let us go. Huh. But listen, listen, listen. If she's at home, you have to raise her in such a way that she longs for the Lord and desires a man who is in pursuit of God. We're giving our daughters to a bunch of lazy, good-for-nothing, trifling boogers. And they assault our daughters. They beat our daughters up, and they want to manipulate them. That's not right. So don't be in a hurry to give her away. Go before the Lord. Be sure he is the will of God for her. Uh, bring them close. Let's, let's, let's touch them. Let's fill on them. How you doing, brother? Look me here, right here. My eyes are not in my shoes. Up here. Let me see where you are. Where do you work? I'm between jobs. She's off limits until you get one. Where do you live? With mom and dad. She's off limits until you get your own place. I tell my boys, you're welcome to stay at my house as long as you like. Notice, my house. As long as you like. When you, talk, when you start talking about wives and children... Gotta go get your own. Does that make sense? But in the meantime, we're training them, teaching them. I tell my boys, if if she's a queen, you treat her like that. You treat her like she's a queen. Mm -hmm. Question is, how many queens do we have? How many queens do we have in here? I tell you how we're going to get to the bottom of this, Brother Michael. No, I'm <laughs> Brother Michael going to say, yeah, she sure is. Yeah, you know what's good for him. Say, yeah. yeah, she's my queen. <laughs> if she's a queen, treat her like that. But mom and dad, raise her up to be a queen. See, it gets quiet on me again. You got to raise her up to be a queen. How many premarital counseling sessions have I had and ask her, baby, do you cook? Crickets. No, she doesn't cook crickets. She says nothing. Oh, oh, so you don't cook. And, and, and him with his overzealous self. Oh, pastor, I'm going to come home from work and cook. <laughs> mm, okay. So do you do laundry? Some of them got nervous. Say, oh, I don't do laundry. I don't do laundry. So you don't cook. You don't do laundry. I can guess you probably don't clean either. Don't cook, no laundry, don't like to clean, but you're a queen. It's 12 o'clock. I better <laughs> I better get out of this sinkhole. <laughs> Woo and it's not family focus Sunday. <laughs> See, we want 
We want people to be for us what we did not get at home. But if you received what you did not get at home, you would not know how to appreciate it. That right there, that right there, that right there. That, that, that's, 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 isn't that amazing? We want what we've never had only to mishandle and mistreat it. We don't know how to handle what we've never had. We just know there's a deficiency in my life and I want those voids filled. But when God sends somebody to you to fill those voids because you don't know how to handle it, you will drive it away. So mom and dad, we need you to train up the queen. So those of us who are raising up kings will know how to treat your queen and your queen will know how to treat our king. How many kings do we have in here? I'm looking around. Some of the brothers didn't move, so I don't know. I... Maybe you misunderstood the question. How many kings do we have up in here? Yes, indeed. You have to know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, why would you want somebody to treat you like something you don't even believe you are? I'm a man. Oh, that's obvious. But are you a king? Hitler was a man too. <laughs> but he killed six million Jews. He was very much a man. Does that make sense? I know I, I was kind of all over the place today. I understand this church. There are some things that you have to do. If you want God to do for you. I didn't touch this text. Now, now, when you read that text again, you read the entire chapter because what happens in the chapter, it lays out how God establishes things for the young man who's pursuant of God, who's pursuant of wisdom. And the Bible says when you possess wisdom, you also possess rubies and gold. And you possess wealth. When you have the wisdom of God. Not the wisdom of the world now. I'm talking about the wisdom of God. Okay. But you put it all into perspective. The reason why Solomon is not addressing daughters is because you're already covered as long as you're under a good covering. But if we get that son right, we get that young man right. We will not have restless nights when we give our daughters to them. We got to protect our children, y'all. We have to protect our children. Protect those sons, protect those daughters. And it's really sad. Huh? You got a lot of young women out there and they they see a good young man. Young man with potential. Young man that's focused and disciplined. Young man who has potential to make good income, provide a stable environment. I like him. I like him. He has what I need. But young man, pump your brakes. Don't be so quick to jump on the first thing you see. The Bible still says he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. You got to look for her. I'm not saying look for out there either. Look for her in prayer. <laughs> look for her in prayer. When you look for her in prayer, God will reveal her to you. 
And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to say this. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. A lot of people feel like if I wait on the Lord, he's not going to give me what I want. It's quiet. So apparently a lot of you think that way. I'm, no, uh, you, you know what you like, right? Oh, we super spiritual now, y'all spiritual. I'm going to go ahead and quit. Y'all done turn spiritual on me. Y'all super spiritual now. Now, we have a lot of men in here who don't have any hair. Some of them by choice. And, and, and our women, Sister Monique. Sister Monique ain't giving up, brother, brother Michael Talbot. That, that's <laughs> Michael is her king. Does that make sense? She's giving him up. I'm assuming my wife will not give me up. <laughs> Hopefully my assumptions are correct, but I understand. Give me up. Don't say that too loud, huh? <laughs> And I hope that your spouse is everything you need. I'm hoping that. There's a big hope. Big hope. But again, we have to understand, church. God will give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, you don't want a man 6'9". He's not going to give you a man who's 6'10". Not throwing any shade on you, Brother Gary. Because you already have your queen, right? Um, well, I don't want no tall man. I want a man who's about six feet tall and about 200. He doesn't have to be all muscle, but I was just making requests known. Is that what I said? I said, we're spiritual. I, I, let me go in. Huh? Yeah. But also, when you give him your list of desires, throw in the Lord. Let him be a praying man. Man who fears God. Loves God. One who's pursuant of you. And once you complete your list, Look at it again and, and make another list. A list of compatibility. Because if he's a praying man, you better be a praying woman. See, uh, it, 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 we, get, we start losing it. God, give me a praying man. But make me a praying woman. What kind of mess? A man who's pursuing after God in prayer and fasting. But Lord, help me to pray and fast. You are not going to be a benefit and a blessing to him if you're not compatible. So when you see him, he's not even looking for you. God, that's what I want, but you are not compatible. You prayed, you prayed a prayer and set Sister April up. <laughs> Sister April praying and fasting and seeking the face of God and Lord, this is what I want, Lord, this is what I want. And Sister April just seeking the Lord and she's just doing her thing and then Mr. Right for you walks in. But because you miss, you miss it's wrong for him, uh, you pray the prayer and, and Sister April is like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't even, she ain't even looking for no man. But that's the one who says, I was seeking the Lord in prayer and I found you. 
<laughs> Listen, when you complete your list, be sure you make another one so that you can be compatible with the man you desire. Okay, I, I'm done. Tell you what, let's all stand. I, I, gotta, I gotta shut up and get out of the way. Oh, I can't wait to Family Focus Sunday. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> what? I need you to connect with somebody. Let's pray for each other this morning. Uh, we could do a conventional altar call, but I want you to connect with somebody. We're going to pray for each other and with each other right now. Somebody connect with that brother right there. That brother right there in the red shirt. Let's connect with him. Amen, amen. Let's connect. Be sure you're connected to and with somebody. I want us to pray. Listen, I want us to pray. Ask the Lord everything you require and expect of us. Help us, oh God, to purpose in our heart to fulfill it. Because if I will, then God. Come on, pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, touch your people right now. Touch your people right now, Lord. Help us, oh God, to be postured to do your will and to do your work. The Bible says that people had a mind to work. Help us to be postured to do the work of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Help us to be diligent and fervent about the business of our King. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Father, in doing so, the blessings of the Lord will rest upon us. Bless your people today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ah. Bless your people today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless your people today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, touch Lord, bless. Oh God, reveal to us, Lord God, any requirement that we have not yet satisfied. Show us, Heavenly Father, the places of our neglect, the places, Heavenly Father, of our mismanagement. Show us, Heavenly Father, that we may be fervent and diligent about fulfilling what's expected of us, what's required of us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God, we desire to be the recipients of your blessings, Lord. Prosperity, the peace of God. Oh, God, use us, Lord. Bless us. Prosper us, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be obedient to thy word. Help us to be obedient to thy word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless your people, Lord. Touch and bless your people, Father. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. If you're here and you need special prayer, come down. We'll pray for you. Move quickly if you're in the name of the Lord. If you need prayer, come on down. We'll pray for you. With, pray with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.